Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another InfoSec Hub video. It's been a while and I promised to make some PSense tutorials, so uh, here we are. Uh, what you see in front of you is a dashboard of PFSense and uh, in this particular case I'm running it inside a virtual uh, machine. So here we have PFSense running and here we have Ubuntu running and Ubuntu access the client and PFSense access the server. So let's go back here in Ubuntu and we go to the web interface. Again, just for the complete overview, here you see the server, this black box here. And you see I'm connected on the web interface here, which makes sense because this is where we are. Okay, today we're going to talk about uh, DNS. And what is DNS? Everybody uses DNS. When you uh, look at this video on YouTube, you're using DNS. Uh, when you are um, playing a video game, when you uh, emailing, you use DNS. DNS stands for Domain Domain Name Servers. So when you type a URL here in the address, uh, here you see an IP address. Also, that's more easy. And when you go, for instance, to YouTube, this is a domain name. Uh, there's an IP address connected to it, and you need a, a DHCP server, uh, a DNS server, I'm sorry, um, to really relay that IP. So you can use the DNS settings given to you by your ISP, your internet service provider. Uh, you can use uh, various other uh, services. You could even use Google DNS, which I wouldn't uh, suggest, but it's possible uh, that all your, your requests go to Google's DNS services and be relayed to you as websites. You also have um, this is uh, this is the address of a DNS server of uh, Google and this one as well. Uh, networking guys know exactly what it is. But let's go back to Google and we type in here open DNS um, IP. So here you have some uh, open DNS home settings family shields you can do some blocking based on dns because you can block uh, all the nasty stuff on the internet as well with open dns um, you just basically use the dns service of open dns okay uh, maybe it's all a little bit vague to you but since you're watching this video you are using a dns but you don't know what dns okay you can set it all up inside PeerSense. so first we're going to go to the overview here uh, this is a PFSense box running inside a virtual machine. Um, it doesn't have any internet connection. This is just to showcase uh, what's possible. I have a live environment, but, uh, but I'm not going to show you that because uh, for obvious security reasons. But uh, this is exactly my um, processor of my uh, gaming computer and I'm running it inside a virtual box. Okay, enough for that. Let's show you something. So we have several services here and we have a DNS forwarder or resolver. And for this particular tutorial, we are going to look at DNS resolver. So we're going to enable this resolver. It has a standard port of uh, 53. Um, you can add some services on top of it. We have this web configurator, um, this uh, certificate. Um, listening port you can all adjust it um, but a few things are important so network interfaces um, this dns um, resolver will be active for all connections so wan which is the internet lan which is your private network uh, we can even set up the ipv6 uh, for your local or local host but out of the box and this is what you use so all the clients that are connected to your Local network will use the DNS resolver and also when you go on the internet, um, DNS services will be enabled. So just make sure that for all devices on your network, DNS resolver is enabled. Also for the outgoing network, you can select when that will be uh, enough because you have your private network and when you go to the internet, we are talking about the wide area network. Um, system domain zone type, uh, transport, transparent is default. Um, 
but you have other configurations just do a little bit of research on it but just keep it on transparent just to make sure that it works um enable dns sec so uh dns request can be sent in https or in a secure form at least so it's encrypted um and that's another thing from a security standpoint that you want to have a dns service that you uh trust because all your DNS requests for all the websites and all the services that you use online will go through this single point. Me, myself, I use my own DNS server um, and it's uh, Pi-hole. Um, so you have a little bit more control over DNS requests. This is also important when it comes to blocking uh, advertisements uh, because you can block them on DNS level as well. It's all about block lists and stuff like that. So moving on, Python mo module DNS query forwarding. If you want to forward it to another DNS server that is defined here in the system tab. Let's see if I can show you this. This is the DNS resolver. This is the, the log file. And here network is unreachable because we don't have internet connection on this device. We can set it up, but uh, this is just for testing purposes. Let's go to the system again. General setup. And here you can add some DNS servers as well. Right, so what we just saw here, we'll back out of this here. Uh, DNS query forwarding, and here it said that these DNS servers will be defined here, and this is this tab. So you can put the Google ones in here or the open DNS or, or whatever you want. There are very uh, various services out there. If you really care about your privacy, you should uh, pick one that uh, has zero logging on uh, DNS queries uh, and you you'll be you'll be fine. Uh, here you can add DNS servers and the, the host names. And this is the general tab of the, the whole system. So if you have any clients connected to your DNS server, you can see the status here. You can see the IP and the host name. So maybe you have an Android phone or an iPhone. You can see what kind of device it is, what kind of IP it has, um, on what, which interface it's connected. Is it perhaps a um, data transfer on the uh, LAN or on the WAN? It, it's all in here. Let's go back. So what more is here? register DHCP leases and DNS resolver. The next video will um, focus more on DHCP, dynamic host uh, control or communication protocol. Not sure. Now I got to look at it. DHCP and that stands for configuration. I was wrong. Almost there, but uh, DHCP basically assigns IP addresses to all the um, all the devices on your network, um, and you have to set up uh, your range. But we'll we'll go in there uh, later on another video. Uh, static IPs DHCP. Um, so if you connect to the network once uh, and you assign a host name to it, you know this is my gaming computer, this is my work laptop, this is my uh, phone. Um, you can add static mapping. So every time your device that connects uh, will have the same IP for as long as it exists. This could be uh, useful when you set up, uh, for instance, uh, network sharing or stuff like this. Uh, when you have open VPN clients, you use a VPN server. There's also a v VPN uh, client in here basically, but it all only goes to uh, from server to server. Because PFSense is a server and you can have a VPN connection set up to another PFSense machine or another network and you set it from server to server. There's uh, on both sides of the network. Basically, you go from your own LAN over the WAN to another LAN and it's all inside a tunnel, virtual private network. Um, if you don't know exactly what it is, yeah, how can I explain? You can either Google it or I will try to explain a little bit. This is basically your own network over the internet. And the internet is an, uh, it's an open space. It's um, in, the, in the basis, it's uh, unsafe, it's un not secure. 
but you can create your own tunnel from uh, end to end uh, and you can do that with vpn uh, but you can only directly connect to another server uh, and that server will be placed on another network granting all the clients that are on that network uh, access uh, to the tunnel and access to resources on the other side of the line basically uh see what more can we talk about so these are the general settings advanced settings is really when you're a networking guy uh, you can set up more stuff you can <clears throat> excuse me you can uh, set up buffers tcp buffers um <coughs> really depending on how busy your network is um my network maybe has 20 25 clients at most but you can imagine pfSense is also being used in a corporate environment even though this is open source um, you need different settings for different environments i will not go in here i will be very honest with you i'm not a networking guy but it's just just want to show you what's possible so back out of here so here we the general tab so we have the dns resolver and we have another service is the dynamic the forwarder so forwarder can also be forwarding is basically you all the dns requests you forward to a certain server and in this case it could be pyhole it could be something else inside your network that is your own dedicated dns server but in most cases you want pfsense to do it so we go back to here resolver and this is what we just talked about um I can't really show you anything that's going on here on this network. I have no clients connected. What else we got here? This is the general tab. Allow DNS server list to be overwritten. Okay, if you check this box, DNS server override, that means that you are going to use the DNS server of your ISP. Um, you have your modem of the ISP, and behind that you can place a PFSense box like this machine and you can make sure that uh, the modem is in bridge mode so all the requests flow through the modem and the modem doesn't do anything it's only just bridging or forwarding stuff to the pfsense machine and the pfsense machine taking care of everything um, when you don't have dns set up yet because you didn't uh, configure it yet you want to check this box then you're still using the dns server of your isp and then at least you have some internet but when you want to specify a DNS server here, then you set it in here. You can add multiple DNS servers, like a primary and a secondary. If in, in case anything fails, it will go to another server. Um, but if you set here DNS server override, that means that it will use the uh, DNS settings of your ISP. Uh, the rest time zone is not important. We covered this. Use SSL and TLS for outgoing DNS queries to forwarding servers. Yeah, this this is also great. Um, what this means is all these DNS requests. Uh, I go to a news website and uh, it can be in plain text, but if you want this kind of request encrypted, which will take a little bit CPU power, not much, but just a little bit, you can have your request encrypted. So. Uh, on the way from your pfSense machine to the DNS server, the request will be encrypted. But if you don't own your own DNS server, then it doesn't really make sense or your DNS provider should uh, not enable logging. Because this is very easy from a privacy, privacy standpoint um, to make sure that it's uh, not being logged because you can have a whole overview of all the domain names and everything that, you, uh, that you're checking online. It's like a phone book, right? It's about all the telephone numbers that you call and you can see a certain pattern. And in this day and age, it's very important for a lot of people to make money on this on big data. But uh, if you can, you know, if you find a DNS provider with no logging, let's just do this together just to conclude this tutorial. DNS provider, no logging. DNS server, no logging. Free DNS. A list of all private DNS servers that don't lock. So it's just as easy as this, right? Free DNS, open free, public DNS. These are the IP addresses. DNS watch. 
DNS sec what you just saw earlier enabled so all your DNS requests will be sent to this DNS server uh, fully encrypted that's exactly what you want uh, you want to send it to uh, uh, you want no logging and you want this enabled so DNS watch j let me just look at this fast free we believe that I should have access to an uncensored resolver free of charge again we talked about DNS resolvers I hope this gets clear a little bit and you see here this is the URL uh, so this is the domain name and behind this is the IP address so you type in this URL and your DNS resolver on PFSense will resolve that to an IP address and that's that DNS query will end up at some DNS server but you can be in control of the DNS server straight out of the box you will use the ISP one uh, they might enable logging, uh, who knows, but there are uh, people out there and here you see donate with Bitcoin. You can uh, give them some money from time to time because they set up this kind of uh, free and open source DNS resolver with DNSSEC enabled. This is exactly what you want. I'm not being sponsored, but this is what you want. Um, I hope this makes sense guys I hope it does again I'm not a networking guy but this is out of the box it should work like this you go to the services settings DNS resolver and you enable this uh, it's very easy just enable it and then you see all the options for all network interfaces and the outgoing network should be WAN so because this is when you leave your local area network um, I started to repeat myself, so I think we are coming up at the end of this video. Uh, next video, we'll talk about DHCP in uh, PFSense. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your Sunday.